Look, the COVID-19 and lockdown situation in Western Australia continues to be mind-boggling. I had my say yesterday about the madness of locking down 2 million people over just one case. Look, and we've heard today again, no new infection, so it's still just one case. I also, also showed you these comments that explain how during devastating fires that have destroyed 70 or more properties, the COVID restrictions actually saw fire crews thin down with fewer firefighters per truck. We have restrictions on the number of uh, firefighters in, in vehicles. You'll, you'll notice everyone, all firefighters are wearing masks and maintaining social distancing. With the driver in the front of an appliance, you'll see, and, and generally one or two in the back. So we're just trying to reduce the crowding of appliances. It seems an absurd priority, but fresh information has revealed an even higher degree of absurdity here, if you can believe that's possible. It's been revealed that security guards in Perth's hotel quarantine... Remember, that's where this one infection came from. Security guards in hotel quarantine have not been wearing masks. There's been no enforcement of compulsory mask wearing in hotel quarantine. So there is now, and, and, this, and this, is, this is how Perth is operating now under Premier Mark McGowan. Two million people locked down over one hotel quarantine infection. Two million people not allowed to leave home and forced to wear masks if they're outside. Firefighters in the hills fighting bushfires forced to wear masks. People in essential services or outside their homes hundreds of kilometres away from Perth forced to wear masks. People fined for not wearing them, but guards in quarantine where the infections arrive were not made to wear masks. That has changed today. Well, we've already done something about that. So, uh, irrespective of the uh, mask-wearing requirement for the lockdown provisions. Uh, we have brought into a, a place a new policy where all people working in those hotels in a risk situation will be wearing masks. Um, and that policy will be examined by Professor Romanthri as part of his inquiry um, and will determine what happens. Wow, that is the sound of the stable door being shut after the horse has bolted and everyone else was locked down days earlier. Yet people support what the government is doing in Western Australia. When they wake up, I reckon the reckoning will be pretty severe. Let's check in, check up on the latest with the fires. I'm joined now by Virginia Abson, a Gigi Gannup resident. And Virginia, uh, the terrible news for you is that you've lost your house in the fires. The good news is you and your family are safe. Yes, we, um, we evacuated uh, on Monday afternoon uh, to discover later that evening that our fire, in fact, had... Uh, sorry, the fire had, in fact, um, destroyed our house. But we, all of us, got out and relocated to a family premise in Gosnell. And that's where you are now. You obviously made the decision under advice to get out at the right time. Yep. Have you been yep. back to your home or have you just been told that you've lost it? Uh, no, we did see footage um, from a neighbour who stayed to defend their property and attempted to defend ours. Um, and they sent footage and just said, sorry, we were unable to save the house. Um, so that was the sort of the first bit that we got on the Monday night. Um, since then, there's been various news coverages with um, photos from above. Um, and, yeah, it, it confirmed it. And the, the kids did manage to get in um, yesterday afternoon. We've got um, cats which are still missing and they were hoping to find them and uh, bring them down. Um, so they, they were able to go through yesterday afternoon to retrieve them. They didn't find them, unfortunately, and it doesn't look good, but we still hold out hope. Um, and they took some more photos and saw devastation firsthand. Virginia, obviously you're grateful that you and your family are safe, but it's a terrible loss. Can you tell us what the house meant to you, how long you'd been there, what you've lost? Yes, and I'll try to do this without breaking down in tears. Uh, the house, we've been in the house 18 years after we moved to the property because our kids rode motorbikes and we had horses, so we were travelling to ride bikes, we were travelling to adjust horses, so we purchased the property in Gidjigan up so 18 years ago, raised the four kids up there, um, did extensions on it, so it was a more comfortable house for us. The kids left home, came back and so on, and uh, it, the house was just literally a home. It was a family home. They all knew they could come back whenever they wanted for whatever reason. Um, our eldest daughter had just moved back 
on this Sunday with uh, um, with her husband and their two children. Um, we packed up their house in Gosnells and moved it up to Gidjigan up over the weekend and um, Monday night lost it all. Um, so we're, well, that's why we're safe. We've got four walls and we've got a roof uh, in Gosnells back at their house. Um, it just means that their plans now of selling, putting this on the market, selling it and moving to the hills for themselves will be put on hold until we actually have somewhere to live up in Gidjigan up again. It's a terrible loss, Virginia. Thanks so much uh, for joining us and good luck uh, with the future. Thank you. I want to cross to Julie Merritt now, who's at Shady Hills. Uh, she's a bulls, which is uh, uh, seven kilometres from the fire. Thanks for talking to us, Julie. I wonder if you can tell us what the situation is there now and what you're doing to help people evacuating the fire zone. Well, at the moment, I'm not directly in Shady Hills. I'm about another three k's north of Shady Hills. Um, my plan swung into action Monday evening and I started moving my livestock off our property. We've been up here for 20 years and moved here because of the lifestyle. We moved here for our animals. So it's horses, sheep, cows, goats, you name it, dogs and cats. So for this morning, I've had four trips to the Nuche Livestock Centre, taking horses and putting them in a, a safe environment away from this fire. And I've just managed to get back home now and I've come back into our street. It's been locked down by the police and I've had a, a little bit of a, an unpleasant word with him to be able to come back through and stay now until such time it becomes untenable that we will take our dogs and go. So it's been a pretty hectic sort of last 36 hours. And how does the weather look now? How, how's, how does the uh, prospects look for the rest of the day? There's a gentle breeze blowing. It's not blowing, it's not blowing away from us. It's blowing towards us. I've got planes sort of coming overhead. You can see a lot of smoke in the distance. It's, it's quite, you know, breathless outside. Um, very, it's very eerie. Um, it's a scary situation. Um, it may not get too bad, and you just can't take the chance, though. So, you know, we've, we've got all our big animals off, so it's just our dogs now, and we'll stay here until such time we can't. Julie, um, I know we've got nothing but admiration for all those involved in the firefighting effort, but are there any concerns about the revelation that crews are being thinned out on the trucks for social distancing, for COVID measures? Are there any concerns that any of these appliances are undermanned compared to what they normally would be? I, I haven't personally seen any evidence of that. I mean, perhaps a hazard hasn't, but I mean, as a community as a whole, we have a, a big congregation of volunteer firefighters. A lot of people in the area are, you know, they're, they're farm savvy and have their own firefighters. We have our own little pod, which, you know, a thousand litres isn't going to save us, but we can fight little spot fires. Um, to my knowledge, I, I can't see any signs of, you know, the thinning out, but I haven't been right in the middle of it. <laughs> Right, Julie, uh, good luck uh, and uh, you've you got, uh, you got a tense afternoon ahead of you. B best of luck for that and thanks for sharing those Thank reports so with much. us. Julie Merritt there okay. uh, near Shady Hills in the Perth Hills. That fire still very much uh, an ongoing situation, as you heard there. We'll keep you up to date here on Sky News throughout the evening and tomorrow.